one of the beautiful things about Peace Camp was that the opportunity arose uh, most of the days for the kids to display their talents. So Jay was among those who volunteered, brought his violin, and he has recruited his father. So let us join in welcoming Jay to play Go Tell Aunt Rhody. Please join us standing. Peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got love like a river, I've got love like a river, and I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got joy like a river. Let's do joy. There we go. I've got joy like a river. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. Let's go back to peace. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. <laughs> And said, I've got joy like a river, and my peace runs like a fountain and an ocean and all the bodies of water in between. Good morning. I'm Reverend Claire Matheny, and I serve as an enabling minister here at Kitimakundi Community Church. We're so glad that you're in-house today and online as we're here to celebrate Peace Camp. This has been a summer in many ways of peace. The July worship task group focused in and zeroed in on peace. Early in the summer, we had Leah Morris in our midst, who was bringing love and peace through music. And on August 8th through 12th, we welcomed 31 children from around the Columbia area to the carriage house and had 11 of us here from KC as volunteers on staff as we partnered with the Little Friends for Peace. Now, this is an example of a call that starts very small, a little seed uh, that was out there that combined to make something uh, so very great happen. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about how a small idea or just something small that can be planted can grow into something so enriching that can bless 
a community. So this day, we'll talk a little bit more about what Peace Camp looked like. We're relying on Sandy and Rebecca, who are on Worship Task Group. Uh, we give thanks for Catherine Schatz, who served on Task Group this month. And we give thanks that Lori is here as well. So we hope that you will settle in wherever your inner feelings are this morning, bubbling, flowing, rippling, <laughs> and, and, and allow the spirit to bring us into a spirit of oneness around the theme of peace. You'll see kids floating in and out of this space. We'll have the opportunity to see pictures from our time together. And ultimately, we're going to be asking that question of how would God be calling us even further forward into that planting and great season that we'd have going on. We are a church that welcomes you, whatever your journey, and because of the journey and who you are and who you are called to be. Welcome this morning. We have a scripture coming up before us that sets our frame of peace. One, in terms of leaving the legacy of peace, we think about the journey of Jesus as it happens in the Gospel of John, as he's preparing his disciples to be leaving them. And he thinks intently about what it is he's going to leave behind and instill in them. Not only will the lessons that he is teaching them be important, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, will also be available to help bring them peace when they are in their deepest places of turbulence and be planting seeds of a kingdom, a kingdom that is yet to come and arrive. So I invite Catherine to come and share from the Gospel of John as we see the legacy of peace being left by Jesus. Scripture John 14. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it ne neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be with you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Ladies. So we had group every day and we got all the teams together and we, because of Leah being here and teaching us this song. And unfortunately, those of us who are at camp, it will not leave our head. We wake, as Mary just told me, she wakes up singing it. I wake, I'm singing it during the day and I try and like replace it with another song, like something doo from the 60s. And it, next thing I know, I'm singing, we're all one family. So everything reminds me of it because I'll be out and somebody will say, you know, everything is, and I, we're all, so we start singing it all over again. So we're going to let you join us. And it's a call and response. We're all one family under, we are all a family under one sky, under one sky under one sky. We're all a family under one sky, a family under one sky. We're people, we're animals, we're flowers, we're trees. We live in mountains, we live in valleys, we live in oceans, we live in rivers. And then we repeat it. So we're gonna sing it through once and then we're gonna teach you the signs that go with it. And the girls are gonna be the response and Amy and I will be the call. Okay, ready? We're all a family under one sky, under one sky, under one sky. We're all a family under one sky, a family under one sky. We're people, we're animals, we're flowers, we're trees. We live on mountains, we live in valleys, we live in Ocean. We live in rivers. We're all family 
bring it around in a circle, it means family. If it's a G, it's group, a T, it's a class. It just means an enclosure of something. Family. We're all a family under one sky. Under one sky, under one sky. We're all a family under one sky, a family under one sky. Group. We're people. Letter P, bring it around in a circle. We're people. We're animals. Right? We're flowers. We sniff the flowers. We're trees. We live. It's letter L coming up from your butt. We live a mountain. We live a valley. We live an ocean. Letter O. Okay, is using a lot of signatures. We live letter R in rivers. All right, easy right here. So we're people. We're animals, we're flowers, we're trees, we live in mountains, we live in valleys, we live in oceans, we live in rivers. Got it? Good. Oh, sure. <laughs> now you know, it's a test. That's right. That was the test. And the, we're going to, Amy and I will do the call, and you'll be watching the girls. Good morning, Casey. Good morning. Um, my family under one sky. So I'm going to start out with a few thoughts about peace, and then I'm going to talk about peace camp. So my peace I give to you, the scripture says. What it doesn't say is how we get or receive it. Peace does not fall from the skies like manna from heaven. It comes to us through other humans, our families, our extended family, our community. And if these groups do not share it with us, especially in our childhood years, we do not get it. We do not get it. And without that early gift, we have extreme difficulty learning how to have inner peace or how to share peace. And without abundant infusions throughout our lives, it can become increasingly challenging to nurture it within our own hearts. As I was working toward a social work degree back in the 1980s, I did my first internship at St. Elizabeth's Hospital in Washington, DC. For those of you who were not born way last century or who do not have DC connections, St. Elizabeth's Hospital was, and according to Google still is, a hospital that treats folks with emotional challenges. I am not sure of their current policies, but when I was there, St. Elizabeth's was the last arms the community created to catch you if you were having severe and life-threatening crises and no insurance. I cringed when I started my internship there as I watched both the pain the folks carried that came to us and the care they received. People arrived there with problems I could barely comprehend. 
And although folks could find small puddles of peace here and there, often they had to walk through harsh rules set by the hospital and recriminations to find any healing peace. Several weeks into my internship, I called my parents and observed to them about my childhood. You didn't do half bad. Some years later, with more life experience under my belt, I became aware I got a childhood that one could describe as almost heaven. No one in my family was perfect, and we worked our buns off. Literally, every member of our family lost weight every summer from working in the fields dawn to dusk, and we gained it right back over the winter. We all had our fears and our traumas, and we were money poor. So I thought we were poor. I failed to understand how the layers and layers of loving community which surrounded me kept me safe, provided food, fun, games, all kinds of nurture and belonging, and more physical, financial, emotional, spiritual, and psychological resources than I could possibly comprehend. It is through the layers of this community I received peace. My sister and I were talking recently, and we both were complaining that at our age, we had so many friends, we could no longer keep up with all of them. In addition, I have had the blessing of falling into so many loving communities, I am unable to stay in touch with all of them. How is that for a complaint? Compare that to the client who was in a homeless shelter in DC last year where Avery, and if anyone is new to KC, Avery is my son, was helping to lead a peace circle with Little Friends for Peace. The client shared in the group that he had no one, no one, no one in his life who was there for him. Last May, most of you know that our son Jordan got married. In addition to the wedding, we had a Vietnamese tea ceremony, during which time each biological parent shared what we would like to pass on from our parents to our children. The phrase that came to me is, it is ours to share. That is how my parents lived, sharing everything we had, from the food in our garden or truck patch, to the house we lived in, and there were times when I came home over the summer and had to, during college, and had to live with my grandparents because my room was taken, to the time we were given. And we could do that because of the incredible wealth of resources that surrounded us. Our family practices were so well known in the community that one time when I was working at a small local grocery store, I got criticized for adding an ounce or two to packages of candy I was putting together, rather than have the bags be short an ounce or two. My boss let me know that that would cut into his profit. And then he said, that is how your dad does business and that is why he never has any money. When I went home and told my dad the story, he roared out a hearty laugh, which suggested you got me. Without any defense of his lifestyle, lack of business acumen, or any return criticism. In addition, I can't tell you how many times I have met someone who has a story to tell of how my dad helped them through difficult times at the Mennonite High School where he taught for 45 years in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And all of these stories are not to pat my parents on their backs. It is to recognize how peace grows and blossoms and blesses when planted in abundance. My peace I give unto you was given in abundance to me and to many of us sitting in this room and to those of you on Zoom. And I also recognize that some of us may be aware of and thinking right now about how peace did not or does not show up in our lives. As soon as Claire heard about Little Friends for Peace Camp, she said, let's do a peace camp at KC. It took a village of KCers and Little Friends for Peace staff to sow peace in our little friends. 
And what did it look like, you may ask? We had 31 children between the ages of five and 12. They were divided into three groups with a Little Friends for Peace staff person and one caseer mentoring each group. In addition, every day we had peace stories and skills presented by MJ Park, one of the founders of Little Friends for Peace. We had games, art, special guests, kids sharing musical and gymnastic talents, and lunch provided by Frank Turbin. <laughs> yes, yay. <laughs> and I might add, Elaine and all of you who nurture the sacred garden, the kids loved the garden, especially the pond. So even though most of you gardeners did not show up to camp, you and the seeds you planted literally showed up to camp. We also gave out numerous scholarships and were housed in this building, which most all of you have helped maintain. So my message is the same to the rest of you. Even if you were not physically here, your money and labor were. Casey, you all made Peace Camp happen. Okay. That is the structure, you might ask, but what did it really look like? Here is what I saw. And I have a peace camp imposter who will help demonstrate what transpired, transpired during camp. <laughs> so kids brought themselves just the way they were to a space that could hug and hold them. We also saw one little boy who came with his mask on and kept it on until one day we saw him take off his mask. We also saw two preteen boys mostly hiding in their shirts as we gathered. And pretty soon they came out of their shirts. On the last day of camp, one young girl was able to write her message to the world, which was hidden all week behind her smiles. And we are in the process of finding appropriate resources for her and we hugged her. Also, one youngster got to visit the peace table after he told someone they were not welcome because they had gay parents. And that young one found a new way to see and respond to differences. Kids started telling us by day two and three that they were coming back next year. Ah, peace camp. <laughs> Thank you, Peace Camp Imposter. You may now return to your seat. <laughs> and that is just the tip of the iceberg, again, literally. We do not know the details of all the inner transformation taking place or what the seeds will yield. And we do know that peace shows up when it is planted. I am going to turn this over to Sandy, but before I do, I have one, one other little story. This morning, right before, um, as we were getting ready, I took a little journey back behind the wall and I saw something that I think has been there for years and I never saw before. I saw the words, and there is no peace. And I thought, what? And I read it. And there is no peace without the language that restores humanness, wholeness, and hope. K. Sonnier. Check it out back there. And I'm interested if anybody else ever saw it. Sandy will now share a little more about the peace messages that were taught and then lead us in a song, reflection, and community sharing. So we had a theme every day and we added to it. We started out with just the whole general peace thing and then we added a theme every day. The first day was care, second day was share, third day was cooperate, fourth day was shine, and the fifth day of, was celebrate. And just to um, to add a little bit onto Rebecca, I'd like to recognize, because we have our some of our Peace Camp staff here, Ken, who was our art director, none, no other words needed for that. It was awesome. Stan, please, Mr. Ken. Ken, Stan. Stand up. And Harriet played games. She did all the games. 
And um, Mary Brandenburg was a team leader. She was working with one of the teams. And Ann Yenchka was our do everything, get everything ready, make sure everything was running smoothly. And ladies, stand up. And then Frank, we would have starved without you. Could you stand, please? Thank you all. So it was um, it was a, a task of everybody. And Ellen, are you here? Ellen, stand, please. Ellen was there. You please stand. No, Ellen's not going to stand. But Ellen was with Anne getting things. She kept our books and kept our records and got the kids registered. And um, everybody um, did their part. And Jeannie Garland's here. And I would like to say a special thank you to Jeannie, because um, although she wasn't on our staff, during that week, she brought me enough school supplies to uh, keep Agape going for the next year. So I, she was cleaning out. And also, I'd like to say, um, Anna's here, but her great grandson, Sammy, was in camp, who has never played the piano in his whole life, but became a virtuoso during talent time. So it was a great, is Marsha here? I would just like to say an absolute special thanks to Marsha because she came in the mornings and she and I were working on the red team that were up here. And those were the little ones. Those were the J's of the world. And we had 11 of them. It's OK. I'm all right. Um, they were wonderful, actually, <laughs> except for the one who could disappear behind the pole. And literally, she could be standing next to you and you look and she's gone. And she disappeared behind one of the poles here in the sanctuary, or she disappeared outside, or she just disappeared. And we did a trust walk one day, and you had to lead them blind. So you put your mask up over your eyes, and I led her. No problem. I forgot one important thing. She was going to lead me. And she's like that tall and just a little imp, right? So she's leading me. And she can tell if I can have my masks where I can see, because she can look up, because she's little. She said, you're not cheating, are you, Miss Sandy? I said, oh, no, dear, but just be really careful because, you know, if I fall and bust my face, it's going to be. Rough. So she leads me and I can tell we're going toward Vantage Point Road and I'm like, I'm going to die. And then she leads me down into the swale and I said to her, you know, they really do need us back there at some point. I said, can I trust you? And she she said, Miss Sandy, you can always trust me. I said, can I trust you for the rest of the day? She said, yep. I said, can I trust you for the rest of the week? She said, yep. And then she ran off. And we did. The rest of the day was pretty good. So we're going to have Anne and the girls and Faith and Phoebe come up. And we're going to sing what we did every day to add our word to the peace song. But we're going to do it to the song. I've got the joy, joy. All right. But we got and we're going to spell out except for cooperation and celebration, which we can't spell out in the time we have. We're going to spell P-E-A-C-E-C-A-R-E-S-H-A-R-E, -E -E, and then cooperation, and then celebrate, and shine will spell, and then cooperation.
So thank you, ladies. So an eight year old, I was at the beach this week with my great, my kids, my grandchild's children and my great granddaughter. And um, so this was our project to get ready for today. And those in the back, I'm sorry, because the letters we had were green. So we made them, it says sowing seeds of peace in case you can't see. And on your chair, when you came in this morning, you had a little seed. And so what we'd like for you to do is in your heart, what do you, what would you like to have happen for peace? What kind of seeds would you sow? We're gonna take a little reflection time and you have, if you need a pen, um, the pen basket is up here. If you need a pen, they're coming around. If you don't, if you have one with you, pull it out. And when you write on here and Claire, and for those of you on Zoom, uh, Claire and Rebecca will be on the chat and they will be taking the seeds that you would like to plant and they'll be writing on here. And then we're just gonna come over and there's some AstroTurf, oh, by the way, I sprayed it off yesterday when I laid it out in the yard to dry and it didn't. And last night when I was here really late setting up, there was a worm in it. I, I almost left him in there, but he looked so pathetic that I thought I should be Buddhist and take him outside and let him have some life. But he was trying very hard to fertilize his grass, which wasn't working very well. But once you do your little seed, we'd like you to come up and it, the, the AstroTurf will hold it and plant your little seed of peas. And what you would like to see in our Garden of Peace as we go forward after having had this camp with our children. The little boy who has two mamas who lives in my neighborhood that had the peace circle. Um, I went up to see his moms that night and I knocked on the door and one of the moms answered and he was right there. And I said, can I tell mommy what happened today? And he said, yes. So I told her his mom what happened. One of one of his moms is a counselor and one of them's a teacher. So it was it was not something that was, but still it could go sideways really fast at peace camp when you get slammed, right? So after I was talking to his mom, little guy said to me, Miss Sandy, thank you for telling. This is the best camp I've ever been to. I'm like, score. So as we go into a couple of minutes of reflection and quiet, what seeds of peace are you sowing? And when you sow your little seed of peace, and if you'd like to come up here and plant it in our garden, and Rebecca and um, Claire will be on Zoom for those of you who would like to write down your seed, show us what, uh, tell us what your seed of peace is, and they will write it. Anything else I'm missing? Okay, we're going to go into a couple of minutes of reflection and quiet time as you Write down and then come and plant in our garden your seed of peace.
Thank you. All these seeds of peace are being sown here in our turf. We've got an eye on line two. Young is going to have a microphone. Um, and if there are those who wish to share a little bit out loud of what has been stirring around peace, what you're planting up here, we want to hear from you. Also have some words here online, and I am writing them down on our seed pages. Ellen, who says, sowing peace in all parts of my family. This is Ellen Leiserson. Kirsten writes, I'm trying to sow unconditional love as peace in the lives of my community. Carol, Carol LaBelle, listening and caring. Martha King, sharing respect. What about you out there? Young has got his microphone. I'm also looking for any hands online. Sowing seeds of peace. I'm going to, as you think, and if there's anything that you want to add and share, I'm going to sidle myself up over here to the piece if Michael is able to follow me. Just read a little sampling of some of the sampler seeds we've got here. Care for the earth, protect others and birds and bees and butterfly. Compassion for those I disagree with. Seeds of peace for Russia and Ukraine. Environment, nature, redemption acceptance and gratitude, my children, lots of children in the back, sowing those seeds, compassion for all, family, love, community, connection. Is there any other germination, any other little seed of peace that is stirring on your heart? We leave open that moment now to share. I know that there are several from Peace Camp who served. If there's anything on your hearts, leaving the moment now. Elaine online says understanding, patience, patience for Mary Lou, Martha Lowhouse, listening. Sharon says to be present to self and family. Electing peaceful candidates, says Liz online. Rebecca is placing those final seeds of peace here in our turf as we center our hearts in prayer. Oh God, who is our divine creator, you who sow so many seeds of peace, sometimes seen and yet unseen, there below the earth, we know that you are helping, oh God, to co-create with us those things that will yet take shape. We know that it is the peace in our own lives and our families that help us to know what it looks like and that we create amongst ourselves communities that can work and wage peace in this world. We acknowledge the turbulent places we carry, oh God, in our own lives and our personal lives, perhaps related to health or family, perhaps related to all that we see around us and that which does not feel peaceful. And yet you instill us with confidence down to the very roots and tips of our being as we are created in your image. We give thanks for the naming of each and every one of these seeds, the seeds that have been planted through peace camp, the dedication, the hard work, the love that has been bestowed, and for what yet might come through this community and church and through each and every one of us. Bring your healing power now, bring your love that we can be brought into the oneness of your garden, the oneness of this world and the once oneness of the kingdom yet to come where we pray there is much laughter of children <laughs> as it calls out from this holy space and where each one of us calls out with the moans and groans and beauty of what it means to be yours in creation. We also bring our offerings now. 
the bits of our labor that we can bring, all that we have is yours. Help us to be generous with what we bring to the offering table today, bringing and knowing that, yes, those coins, those dollars can also be a part of the larger vision of peace. We bring them now. Amen. There'll be a ways to give slide there online and we're passing the baskets in house. As we pass those baskets, I want to offer up some announcements. I know that Don has one coming shortly on Barn Workday. It's coming up September 5th, 8.30 to noon, Fun Food Fellowship. We ask that you sign up on the church website, www.kcchurch.org. There is a job or the invitation just to sit and be to all. We are grateful. The council meeting uh, that is set for today will be at 1130 in hybrid formation. So we will, some of us will be downstairs. Some of us will be online. We look forward to welcoming any and all who can come. After church, if you'd remain and uh, we're looking for those who are able to just replace your chairs on the back wall as possible. Um, we're just hoping to have a clear space as there is an event coming afterward. I believe that is great. Okay. Next, uh, just looking for the Peace Camp slideshow. We'll have a chance to see some of the images of the activities that you just heard for this brief time of seeing these beautiful images before we take our peaceful leave this morning. Thank you, God, for the many gifts that we bring for what we have indeed, again, is yours. Thank you for the generosity that comes through these talents. We ask that they would be used for the further formation of your love and peace in all places. Amen. So as we go into sending forth, we're going to do two things. We're gonna, we're gonna end today the way we ended our, so when camp was over every day, somebody said to me, I'll just back up a little bit. They said, oh, I bet it's really tiring going to camp. I was like, let me tell you something. I live right there. When I said, let me run home and get it. I literally meant, let me run home and get it. And camp's over at one o'clock and I'm home by 2.30. And I sleep in my own bed and I have my own shower and we're not up 24 seven. I considered it heaven, just a big to let you all know that it was heaven. So after camp was over, we all got together as staff and we did a circle up and we talked about the day and um, we talked about what went right and what didn't go so right. And, and then we got our plans for the next day, but we all ended by putting our hands in the middle of the table and 
we would go one, two, three, and then we would say peace. So that's what I want us to do today for the 74th, because then we're going to do, because you did such a good job last week on the round, that we're going to do it in three-part harmony this week. We're going to go, go now in peace, go now in peace, may the Lord be with you everywhere you go. But we're going to do it in three-part harmony so that Amy and um, Teresa will be up here, and I know you can do it. And those of you at home, choose a, choose, choose a team just any team at all, choose a team and listen and harmonize, be with us. So what I would like you to do is put your hand in the middle, just pretend we're all around the circle. We're all around the circle. We have planted our seeds. We have given our heart. We have thought about peace means in our lives. We're gonna go for it from this place and we're gonna have peace. One, two, three, peace. So what we're gonna do with the song is we're gonna sing, we're gonna sing it through twice, go now in peace. And then we're gonna, and then we're going to divide first two rows are Teresa's, second two rows are mine, and I'll walk back, and third two rows are Amy's, okay? And we'll sing it through twice. We'll sing it through twice in the round. It'll be beautiful. And those of you at home, choose a team, okay? And we're gonna sing it through. And Rebecca, if you'll up here while we're going to with our teams, that would be great because that way it'll keep and Teresa will be up here. Do, do we need to go back with our groups as we sing? Or are you guys competent to know that you're the last two rows in the next one? So it's one, two, Vicky's row, and then oh Margie, we're out of here. And Margie's row. Margie and all the way across to John will be my row. Okay. So it'll be Mary, would be um Liz and Margie and John and Erica. No, I know. That's why I'm only taking one row. And then I'm going to let Amy have the last two rows. So it'll be two rows. Oh, no, I do have two rows. So one, two, Harriet and John, two, one, two. And then from you back is Amy. Okay, got it. All right, here we go. Counting is not a strong suit. Should I do number two? Peace, go now in peace. May the Lord of the surround you everywhere, everywhere you may Sing it again. go. Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the Lord of the surround you everywhere.